Welcome to Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from Commander.com with a K. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O. Gang's all here. Kim, Ali, Ben, I'm Mike. And today, wow, we're going to take a deep dive on what kind of phones we're using. And we want to know what kind of phone you're using. Android versus iPhone. We'll get into that in just a bit. Also, we'd love it if you tap the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And we're going to start out with the news and America's digital goddess, Kim Commando. You know, this is going to sound strange that I'm starting out the news talking about used cars. What the heck does used cars have to do with technology? Well, a Google search is trending now that could mean more money in your pocket. And I'm all about helping people make more money and get more money. See, people are buying used cars a lot. And the inventory is really tight for used cars. And that means that the used car that you have right now could be worth big bucks. And you might be pleasantly surprised that if you take a moment and check out how much your car is worth. Now, listen to this. According to Edmonds, the average value of all used cars during the month of March in 2021 hit an all-time high, all-time high ever, climbing to almost $17,000. A year ago, maybe $14,000. So again, how does this tie into technology? I'm so glad that you asked. Yes, raise your hand because there's a chip shortage. And Allie's going to be talking more about that. So I'm not going to like do a total like deep dive on that. But because of the chip shortage, the automakers don't have an excess supply of new cars, which is making the used car marketplace go like crazy. And plus, the big reason why people buy cars. Do you know the reason? It's not to take your girlfriend out on a date or anything like that. It's because you have to get to work. And with the pandemic coming to a close, more people are car shopping, especially now as the job market is totally looking better. And then what about all the people who took public transit? COVID hit. They were like, I am not getting into a bus, a train or whatever it may be, because I don't want to get those icky germs. I don't want exposure to COVID-19. So what cars are hot? Okay. So I'm sorry, Michael. Your 12-year-old Honda Accord no. wow. is not it. Bummer. I know. I'm sorry. People want SUVs. They want pickup trucks. So if you have one, you might want to think about selling it. Now, Edmund says that the top trucks are the Ford F-250 Super Duty. I don't know what Super Duty means, but it sounds like it must be a really great truck. The GMC Sierra 2500 Heavy Duty, not to be confused with Super Duty, and the F-350 Super Duty, they all tied for number one spot on the list. They say they retain at least 80% of their value and they're three years old. But it's not just trucks that they're retaining their value the best. Think about any used car that you have right now. It is going for top dollar. So you can get the value of your car at these sites, Kelly Blue Book, which is kbb.com, autotrader.com, and of course, edmunds.com. And speaking of cars, do we have time for a little joke to lighten things up before we go to Alley Mike? Of course. Okay. So three friends are on a road trip. And unfortunately, they die in a crash. And at the pearly gates, St. Peter says to the first guy, John, you've cheated on your wife 12 times. John says, oh, yeah, you know, I, I did. And then St. Peter says, sorry, John, you get a Honda. Then John asks Peter what the keys are for, and he says, well, you need the Honda and the keys to get around heaven. You see, heaven's big and vast. So the next friend shows up, Bob, and he comes up, and he never cheated on his wife ever. So he gets the car of his choice, a bright red Ferrari. And then the third friend who died in the crash, Mike, he cheated on his wife 56 times, and he got a used Subaru. Now, a few years later, Mike and John see Bob crying in his red Ferrari. And they come up to him, and they say, Bob, Bob. How could you be crying? You have got the best car anybody could possibly have, a red Ferrari. And Bob says in between his tears, I just saw my wife riding a broken old scooter. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. So, Ben, are you ready? Overdue VHS rental leads to embezzlement charges. Yeah, it's, you know, virtually everything you watch now is on demand. Movies. TV shows. But 20 years ago, the struggle was real. I was going through an old box the other day and I found my old Blockbuster video card. Oh, 
Oh, I found mine too. <laughs> I didn't throw it away. Did you? Oh, no. It's, it's uh, tacked up on my wall now. But it's still in perfect condition. Allie, do you have one? No, I sure don't. I oh. used my mom's. Oh, sorry. Womp, womp. Sorry. <laughs> I have good memories, but you remember some of the, the problems. You remember the fees, the late fees, or the, <laughs> yeah. you didn't rewind it fee. Be kind, rewind. <laughs> or how about you remember when you'd go in and you'd like stand by the, the box where people just dropped off the VHS tapes. So you're like, oh yeah, that's the one I wanted. That's the one I want. Before you put it back on the shelf, give it to me, please, please, please. Oh yeah. It was, yeah, the first come, first serve stuff. But well, those things even now can come back to haunt you. So, and this is one of the craziest stories I've heard in a little while. <laughs> a woman in Texas goes to the DMV to get her last name changed on her driver's license. Well, her info comes up flagged in the system. Some kind of charges in her home state of Oklahoma. And it related to a VHS tape she rented back in 2000. Oh, no. Really? <laughs> it gets better. She doesn't remember it, but apparently a tape with a few episodes of the show Sabrina the Teenage Witch <laughs> <laughs> was never returned. Oh, Sabrina. <laughs> and at some point over the past 21 years, she was slapped with felony embezzlement charges. Felony. For real? Yes. Can you imagine like going to fill out a job application? Have you ever committed a felony? Yes, it was Sabrina, the teenage witch. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever the video store she rented it from, it, you know, it shut down in 08. But the charges followed. And she says that over the years, she's been let go from various jobs. For seemingly no reason, and now she thinks she knows the reason why. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> now, well, kind of a happy ending after uh, local news stations picked up on this whole ordeal. Uh, the court decided to be kind and rewind, dropped the charges, and expunged her record. Thank goodness. Correct. Yeah, she can go get a job now. So uh, the global chip, we're back on the chip uh, crisis that makes it impossible to find PlayStations and graphics as well. Yeah, so there's this global chip shortage. Tortilla chips, Cheetos, Doritos. No, just <laughs> it's the little processors that make all of our electronics work, right? So we've talked before about how this means it's almost impossible to find a PlayStation or a computer graphics card that isn't super expensive or cars, like Kim said, because cars have on average like 40 different chips in them. And yeah, I mean, who would have ever thought? I mean, oh, think that, about that. When, that handy seat warmer. When, yeah, when you see, when you look at classic cars, which, you know, I'm a big car collector. And last night we drove Barry's 1967 Chevy Corvette that was in the movie Con Air. Of course, not the Con Air that dropped, the car that dropped to the ground. This is the, the other one that was on the road. And I'm driving down, I'm thinking to myself, wow, this car has like no electronics. And today, as you mentioned, Allie, I mean, all kinds of computer and electronics and black boxes and things like that. Yeah, and even, you know... A, a chip that costs a dollar, if they don't have it, they can't finish the car. Now, if you weren't trying to buy a fancy graphics card, a PlayStation, a new car, okay, it didn't matter that much to you. But now the shortage is going to hit a little closer to home. And next on the list of things that are going to be either hard to find or more expensive, smartphones, TVs, and home appliances. Why the chip shortage? Well, it really goes back to COVID. Uh, people bought more electronics in the past year than ever. And there were outages at a bunch of the facilities. So they were making less. People were buying more. And it's gotten even worse because some of the Chinese companies that make them have been blacklisted from exporting. Samsung, they've already reduced orders for their new smartphone components. The ones that make apps work, your display, the camera sensors, all those are in short supply. LG, they're saying it's going to be harder to find a TV or they're going to be more expensive. And then appliances. There is something in even your toaster, it's called a microcontroller, and that's what says, I like my toast very dark or just lightly <laughs> toasted, please. Those are in short supply. So everything from washing machines to toasters, harder to get and more expensive. Kim, you've, you're building a house and buying appliances. Have you run into this problem yet? Not yet, because Lucky my you. contractors keep saying it's another 30 days. It's another 30 <laughs> days. So maybe. It's another 30 days. <laughs> The appliances. When you get to the appliances, the chips are going to be like, well, it's going to be another 60 days. It'll be like circa 2020, which, you know, it, it is interesting. Um, Ian needed a new laptop. He reminded me of this fact over the weekend that his current MacBook was six years old and it was time for a new one. So I looked at his screen. I'm like, oh, graphics card is gone because he's all lines through. I said, did you drop it? No, I didn't drop it. And then he looks at me and goes, how do you know that the graphics card is bad? I'm like, oh, hello, <laughs> this is me. So we went shopping for a new MacBook. 
just a little side story. And a new MacBook, you can buy it with the M1 processor or an Intel Core 5 processor or, or an Intel Core 7 processor. Okay. Seven is better than five. Okay. And the M1 processor was $150 off on sale. And when you start doing research about that M1 processor is that it's really not the best chip quite yet from Apple. And of course, if you're not familiar with the M1 processor, Apple would only use Intel chips, but now they came out with their own chip, the M1, that's supposed to be bigger and better and smaller and faster, you know, all those adjectives. So we ended up buying him a 2020 model MacBook Pro with an Intel Core 7 processor for $1,499. Wow. Which is a great price. And I know you might be sitting there going, well, you know, I can get a Windows laptop for 300 bucks, and I get that. I can get a Chromebook for 80 bucks. I get that. But if you're looking for a MacBook, and then, of course, now it comes time for uh, Apple Care. And I have to tell you, I, I sat back and I was like so proud of Ian because he's like, I don't need Apple Care. I'm just going to waste three hundred dollars. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you're wearing like three hundred dollars shoes. That's what I said. You're wearing three hundred dollars sneakers that you bought. And he's like, no, nope, I never dropped my laptop. I said, here's the problem. Now that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fate of, of something is going to come upon you. So you need to get the Apple Care. So, you know, all together. But the bottom line there is that if you are in the market for a MacBook Pro, it does get very confusing. And we ended up buying the MacBook cheaper on Amazon.com at the Apple store instead of the Apple.com store. So it pays to shop around a little bit. Well, thanks for letting me barge in. And so you guys have brand new or not true coming up. And so who's... who's Ben's got the product. Is Ben got the products oh, today, ben right? Okay. Product. Oh, so, yeah. so let me ask you, Ben. Who do you think is going to guess it right this week? Basing it off track records, <laughs> it's typically Allie. Yeah, she always gets them. Now... Oh, come on, Mike. I'm, this week is going to be different. Oh, okay. And no, it? no, no. You're not going to get it right either, Mike. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this week, <laughs> okay. n- nobody's going to get it okay, right. Okay, Mike. Okay, in just a few minutes, we're going to look at phones. What kind of phones do we use? What kind of phones are you using? Android versus iPhone. What's better? And also, we've got brand new or not true just ahead. It's Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from Commando.com. Hey, welcome back to Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from Commander.com. Brand new or not true is just ahead. First, we've got a quick tip for you. Recently, I gave a tip for sending super secret messages on your phone. I remember that. Sure. Yeah. So we're going to stay in spy mode this week, and we're going to talk about how to hide files and folders on your computer. Now, you might not necessarily do this because you're being sneaky. Maybe you just don't want somebody stumbling upon, let's say, your medical records or financial documents. You can hide them on your computer, and it's actually really easy. Stick with me. There are a few steps. I'm going to tell you how to do it first on a Windows computer. So you're going to find the file or the folder, right-click on it, and at the bottom, go to Properties. There's a bunch of data, and then there's something that says Attributes. You're going to click that, and then you'll see an option for Hidden. You can either check it on or off. All you have to do, check the box and hit Apply. Now, on a Mac, it's a lot more complicated. You're going to have to use the terminal, run commands. This all sounds very... Uh, spy mode, we'll say. I'm not going to go through all those steps because it's too much for just listening to. But if you go over to commando.com and search hide folders, Mac, you'll find the steps right there. It's not as hard as it looks. We'll walk you right through it. And then you'll actually look pretty cool to your friends and family. What happens, though, when you hide the folder and can't find it? How do you find it? Don't worry. We've got (laughs) tips for how to find it, too. This is actually a funny story. We should have had Kim tell this. Uh, Kim had files on her computer she kept trying to open it, and it wasn't there. Well, it turns out they were hidden. <laughs> so if you uh, if you accidentally do that, it can drive you a little up the wall. Yeah. Okay. It's time now for America's newest national game show sensation, where you can play and guess, is it brand new or not true? Every week, literally thousands of new products, sites, apps, and services are announced in the technology world. Some are destined for greatness. Others, not so much. Oftentimes, the products sound crazy, outlandish, and ridiculous, so you sit back and think, what were they thinking? And all of a sudden, we've created a new tech millionaire. When playing Brand New or Not True, we present you, the home listener, with three products or ideas, which two of the three are fake and which one is real. 
All right, let's get started. Ben's got the products this week. Product number one. Well, today's theme, lawn care. Okay. All right. Okay, so even basic smart sprinkler controllers that have been around for a few years, they let you set schedules that adjust automatically based on seasonal shifts, rainfall data. But the Orbit Beehive isn't your average eight-zone system. It also doubles as a Wi-Fi extender that improves your outdoor internet reception. Once you replace your existing irrigation controller, connect it to your home network through the app and test each zone. Then you can enable the optional feature that turns a device into a network repeater, which can expand your home network by up to 200 feet. The Orbit Beehive hit the market in March for $199, which is $30 cheaper than the comparable ratio that doesn't have a Wi-Fi extender. One big caveat, though, this feature is not compatible with mesh router systems. Okay, so this is this a router? I don't think I, I missed. I, it's I must a sprinkler have missed. system. It's a sprinkler it system. It doubles as a Wi-Fi extender. Okay. So it, ex, it extends your home network. Okay, got it. What's product number two? Well, again, for years, we've had robot vacuums. We've had robotic mops. You have robotic pool cleaners and lawn mowers. Well, now you have one specifically for your garden, the weed problem in your garden. The Tertil, T-E-R-T-I-L-L, Tertil, get it, solar-powered weeding robot that's basically a Roomba that lives in your garden. No programming needed. It's a round robot, weatherproof shell, large solar pa- panel so you never have to charge it. You just leave it in the garden. It's ideal for vegetable gardens, basic flower beds. It just goes around cutting down the weeds and then cutting, down them, cutting them down again when they grow back doesn't need any regular maintenance aside from being manually emptied from time to time. The Turtill Garden Weeding Robot is now available for $349. <laughs> okay, again, good products. All right. Now that brings me back to robotic lawn mowers. And the Husqvarna Automo- Automower 440X Hybrid looks like your standard round lawn mowing robot. Modern bells and whistles with a companion app you set up schedules, adjust the cutting deck height, things like that. And like other robo-mowers, it can map out your property. Now remember it had the name Hybrid in the name, and that's not because it's electric and gas. It's electric, but it's named that way because you can also open the top compartment to reveal a fold-out handle that converts it from autonomous to self-propelled walk-behind. And that's good for properties that, you know, you might have hard-to-reach areas or unique obstacles in the way that could be problematic for robotic mowers to just do their own thing. Now, this mower has a battery that will cut three-tenths of an acre on a single charge. Now, the Husqvarna 315X is a top-of-the-line mower that isn't hybrid, and it costs $2,000. The 440X Hybrid will set you back $2,800. Well, let's do the big reveal, Ben. Yeah, I'm going to say the weed-eating robot is, uh, is a true product. The hybrid lawn mowing thing does have come so long, so uh, so far, you know, real recently. I'm gonna say that's true. So the Orbit Beehive Irrigation Control Center and uh, and Wi-Fi extender. I'm gonna say the 40, 440X hybrid Husqvarna lawn mower is the real product. The weeding robot doesn't doesn't work and then the orbit uh beehive irrigation control and wi-fi extender doesn't work i'm with you i think the gardening robot i don't know how it would tell what was a weed and what were actually your flowers or crops so i'm gonna say that one is fake oh i think there's too much packed into the orbit beehive I don't think that's real. I think a company is going to want you to buy a sprinkler. They're going to want you to buy a Wi-Fi extender. They're not going to combine them. So I will say the auto mower is the real product. The hybrid, the product number three hybrid. Yep. So we both we both picked the lawnmower X440 or whatever it was. The Husqvarna auto mower 440X hybrid. Yes. That's what you picked. Okay. Yes. So we'll start the orbit. You're right. Not real. Good. I thought it was pretty cool, though. Yeah, it's Would a good cool. idea. Control your sprinkler and give you a little extra Wi-Fi, but that's fine. The other thing, the Turtill. How do you want to do this? You want me to say Yeah, it? yeah, just it? Did, let's give us the Turtill. Is it is it real or not real? Allie had such a great um, 
idea that it, how is it going to determine be weeds or flowers or what's in the garden? Well, and you have a point in the Turtill robot weed trimmer, even though that is a concern, <laughs> is very real. Oh! oh. He did it again. It's, it's, like, <laughs> it's like they make up these products. Where in the heck did that come from and how does it do it? Did you see it in action? Yeah. I think it was invented by uh, somebody who used to work at iRobot who worked on Oh, the, funny. So, but yeah, it's, it's green. It, it's, it's got a solar panel on the top and you just push a button on the top and it just kind of wanders around your garden looking for weeds. We're just bumping into weeds. So. Wow. Uh, you got us. Good one, Ben. So it, it, like, it uses AI or something to tell what's a weed and what's not a weed? It's, it, it's got some onboard sensors uh, similar to what you'd have in a, in a vacuum. Uh, I can't remember if this one maps or not because it seems pretty simple. Like it, it didn't seem to have an app. You just have to push a button on it. You do have to empty it. That's really the only maintenance. Now, the Husqvarna, I just took one of the existing ones because they do make some nice robo mowers. And I thought, wouldn't that be cool if we just had a fold out handle yeah. so you could take charge of it? <laughs> so. All right. That is it for this week's edition of Brand New or Not True. Thanks, Ben and Allie. And just ahead, We're going to look at phones. We're going to take a look at the phones that we use, what's good, what's bad about them, and if we have any dream phones that we're looking at. uh, That's next on Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends and commando.com. Welcome back to Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from commander.com. Every week we give you the inside scoop on what's going on in tech, so you're the source of tech information for your friends and family. This week, we want to take a look at your phone. What kind of phone you use? What do you like about it? Don't like about it? What we like about them? Don't like about them? How do they compare? Go ahead. Yeah, I wanted us to talk about what phones we have now, what phones we think fondly of. I think this is such a fun conversation. I was just cleaning out the drawers in my office, and I found a stack of old phones. I found this old LG that is smaller than a pack of cards. It's so tiny. I found a stack of iPhones, of course, all different sizes throughout the year. Some are metal, some are plastic, most are cracked. (laughs) So I thought we could talk about, we'll just go around. I will start. What do we use now? A few years ago, I switched from iPhone to Android. I've been using a Huawei phone and I chose that one because at the time it was the best phone out there as far as storage space and camera. So had the best camera, better than, at that time, it was far and away better than the iPhone. Even now, at a couple years old, my camera is still as good as the new iPhone cameras. It was an adjustment, but it wasn't so bad. I'm really one of those people, I pick up pretty quick, and so moving from iPhone to Android, yeah, there's a little adjustment. You don't realize, this button does this. Now I go here for that, but once you get past it, it's fine. I'm not sure if I'll go back. I'm kind of thinking... You know, this phone is on its last legs. I dropped it uh, a few months ago, so it's got a crack. I've just been dealing with it. Don't really mind that much. But Huawei's not going to be supported uh, anymore, and so I'm not going to be able to get updates, which is the problem. So I'm thinking I might go with one of the Samsung phones, an S21, or I've never had a a Samsung flagship, and they're supposed to be really good phones, so I might try that one. What about you guys right now? Mike, what do you use? Well, on that subject, first of all, the Samsung. I had a Samsung phone a while back, and I don't know if they still are doing it, but they're filled where well, they were filled with bloatware. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I never went back to Samsung. All right. So next on the subject, while I was thinking about it, John turned me on to these screen protectors. You said your phones were cracked. Yes. I'm telling you, it saved me probably three times, and they're cheap. They're like eight. $10, you get three of them. Let me tell you a little story. I had one mm-hmm. on my phone, dropped it. It cracked. Great. Took it off. Within the same week, I dropped my phone again. Yeah. And that's when it cracked. Yeah. I know. it's. <sighs> but they come in packs of three. Yeah. So now I, and I did just like two weeks ago on this phone, I dropped it. It I was cracked. You know, I was like, oh, no. And then I realized, no, it was just the protection part. Yeah. Oh, save oh, me about so nice. three or four hundred dollars. I know this is a Motorola phone. Now I found Motorola two phones ago. They're not cheap. They're not really expensive. So this is about four hundred dollars, and um, it's the latest version. It's an Android phone, and um, I love it. I think it's uh, it's it's fast and it's you know not too big. 
and um, it has all the bells and whistles. It does the latest Androids. So I'm I'm really happy with it. This is actually my second one because, as I said, I dropped my first one, too, and really cracked the screen and was telling these guys about it. And they're like, you've got to get these screen protectors. Yeah, they're, they're life Really, really worth it. Go ahead, Ben. I have the iPhone 12 Pro Max. The it's, super iPhone. A.K.A. The, the biggest phone the, in the, the world. <laughs> it fits in my pocket, so no complaints. <laughs> Now, the thing about screen protectors, I haven't had one of those in years. Uh-huh. They annoyed me so much. Because if I couldn't get all the bubbles out, yeah, oh, I'd have to take it off and either throw it away and get a new one. I just I could, couldn't deal with that. So I just I stopped using But I've only cracked, of all the phones I've ever had over the years, I've only cracked one screen. Wow. And I've, yeah. I've probably only dropped a phone five or six times total. Wow. I mean, how many are you on a day? Five or six times. Okay. So this is... <laughs> <laughs> But over constantly, the, yeah. But I mean, I, I've had mostly iPhones over the years. Uh, occasionally, I'll go, I'll venture over to Android. I had uh, a, one of the Galaxies from years ago, and then I bought the Note Seven uh, five or six years ago, and that one was note noteworthy because that was the one they recalled really fast because it had the uh, uh, catch the, on fire problem or blow up, you know. <laughs> it, yeah. So they had me mail that back in a fireproof box, and I went back to iPhone. I got the and I got one of the Notes, uh, the Note Nine, a couple of years ago, and it was okay. I like how you could customize, and it's just it wasn't as clean an experience as I as I've grown used to on on Apple. But go back years, there are phones I'm I'm fond of. I miss my little BlackBerry Pearl. Oh, the I tiny loved little, that phone. Yeah, that was yeah. good, wasn't it? That's was a good one. I used to have one made by HTC, and it was called the T-Mobile Shadow. And it had this little pop-out keyboard, and it was really slick, and it was this cool copper, dark copper. We're talking color. about a little bubble mouse, too, that little thumb yeah. Yeah. bubble. Yeah. yeah. And I found one of my little old Nokias from uh, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. I still got it in my drawer. Those things were tanks. You could – that I couldn't break that one. Oh, yeah. You'd have to run it over the car. And that guy had a little belt clip that you just popped and you know, push <laughs> a button and remove it. From, what know, a cool dude. Awesome. I know. I know. I always wanted, remember sidekicks? They mm-hmm. were, yeah. I wanted one of those so bad. I never had a sidekick. I loved the Razor. Oh, I yeah. wanted one of that those. That was a good one. Those were cool. I had a hot Kim had one. a pink one. Yeah. I did too. <laughs> oh, that was the cool phone. Yeah. I really loved that Blackberry Pearl. That was a good phone. I had a Palm Pre too. That was my, right before I moved to iPhone, a Palm Pre was the last phone I had. I remember that one fondly. Do you remember, well, the BlackBerry was like the most popular phone. I still remember just a couple of years maybe after I started. So 17 years ago, the BlackBerry was the number one phone. And I remember Kim doing the news on the show one weekend and their CEO was talking about, oh, this whole Android thing is just going (laughs) to blow right by. We're going to just do our own thing. And I remember Kim going, really bad idea on the show, too. And that didn't work out so well it for them. It did not work out. <laughs> yeah, no. that had been around 07 or so, I guess. Because, yeah, they thought iPhones were going to be a fad. Right. Nobody's going to want a touch keyboard. <laughs> so. Yeah, and that's a good point. Now we've really got the two options. You're an iPhone person, you're an Android person. And once you're on, you know, locked into one, you're there for a long time. What about all those Microsoft people that are having the Microsoft? Oh, no. Wait a minute. Do they still have <laughs> microphones? <Blah, blah. laughs> it's a Tech Refresh podcast with Kim Commando and friends. One of the things we promise every week to keep you from getting scammed. So we talk about a new scam every week that you need to watch out for. Well, the risk of malware only gets worse as time goes on. That's for your computer and your smartphone. You know, Android in particular has always been a target because of its open source operating system. Now there's a new one you should know about, and it's called, wait for it, Flubot. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of a silly name. It doesn't sound like it's, oh, that's a bad malware, but it's actually not messing around. It's causing some serious problems in the UK and in other parts of Europe. And as that always goes, it's only a matter of time before it makes its way to the States. It starts like so many others. You get a text message about some kind of package delivery. Tap on the link. It takes you to a fake shipping company site that wants you to download a special tracking tool. But this this tracking tool is really special, so the instructions want you to turn off some of your Android security settings. Well, that seems legit, right? Yeah, so well, and if you do that, the FluBot is going to overrun your phone, and it'll have access to pretty much any information on it. And it gets worse. It can also access your contact list 
and is able to send messages to all of them trying to trick your contacts into downloading the malware on their Android devices too. So there are the serious red flags, the text to begin with, the bigger one being, though, changing your security settings. Uh, We have more about Flubot and tips to avoid it at commando.com. But seriously, this is this malware is not the kind of fun you want to share with the whole family. All right, up next, it's a new way for a grandma to keep up with her grandkids. It's Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from commando.com. Thanks for listening to the Tech Refresh podcast, heard exclusively on the Kim Commando Explains podcast from commando.com. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button so you get this podcast delivered automatically every Friday with the Kim Commando Explains podcast. That also gets you the special feature podcast, including this this week's about, well, the guy that wrote the book on what I call website optimism. So if you have a website, if you have a business that has a website, you must listen to this podcast. It's about, it's about how to get more clicks in where you need it to monetize your website. Who, who doesn't want to do that? So check it out. It's at Kim Commando Explains. Just look up Commando with a K, K-O-M-A-N-D-O on your favorite podcast player. All right. A new way for grandma to keep up with the grandkids. Yeah, keeping in touch can be hard for older people who maybe don't have a great handle on today's tech. You know, we can pick up our phones and we can FaceTime, but if you're not great with those smooth screens, digital interfaces, you need a different option. That's why a guy, his name is Manuel, he built Yaya Graham. It's a really impressive DIY project that he made for his grandma. He calls her his Yaya, and it sends texts and voice messages just like using an old phone switchboard. So to send the message... His Yaya physically plugs in a cable next to the name of the recipient. It's all her grandkids in there. Then she presses and holds a button and records audio. There's a mic built right in. So say she sends it to Manuel. He gets the message on his phone like a regular voice note. And then if he sends back a text, it actually gets printed out like a telegram because he built in a printer, too. This isn't just some guy who was looking to DIY. He's a senior engineer for a software firm uh, at a for a software firm in Spain. His invention is powered by the Raspberry Pi 4. It runs on Python. He uses third-party software to make it work. This is a really smart guy who had a really good idea. The microphone in there, it's a cheap USB, and the printer is like the one used in cashier tills, so like printing a receipt. And then it runs on Telegram, the messaging service. Now, most of his grandmother's grandkids can't visit right now because COVID is still really bad there, and she was having a hard time with regular phone calls, text messages, even video calls. And so he made this way that she can... Make and receive messages all by herself. What's it called again? Yaya Graham. <laughs> I love it. Isn't Yaya Graham. That's so Graham. cute. It's a good name for a great product. Love it. Uh huh. Brand new or not true worthy, huh? Yeah. yeah. These yeah. guys just forget what we, we just talked about. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to comment about the podcast, good or bad, mostly good, send us an email to podcast at commander.com. Again, that's podcast at commander.com. On behalf of Kim, Ben, Ali, I'm Mike, and we'll see you next time. And for the latest digital news and articles anytime, go to commando.com with a K. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O.